Now tonight on a backbench as well, men get this much, women get that much pay equity. Why is this still such a big issue in 2016? Also, we're talking consent and refugees. I'm Wallace Chapman, and welcome to New Zealand's one and only pub politics show. Let's rock and roll. Thank you. to be here tonight. Tonight is great to be here. Welcome to Back Peters episode uh, six here, 2016. And by the way, uh, if anybody sees a quarter five dollar note outside the Back Peter, can you um, just uh, let me know, please, before the end of the show? Um, tonight we're talking about some big issues like pay equity and such like, but what a panel tonight, what a hell of a panel. Uh, could you please welcome National MP for Wai Makariri, Matt Ducey. Thank you, Wallace. Thank you very much. How are you, Matt? Good, thanks, Wallace. Very, good to see very you good. again. Good to see you again. Disappointed you didn't come down to Christchurch. You said you were going to bring back benches down to we're, Canterbury last year. We'll see what we can do. Budget, yeah. budget permitting, we'll see what we can do. Come on. Come on, all right. See the best new small city being built. <laughs> well, text us, uh, tweet us. Is that right? Is Matt Ducey right? Here we go. Number one, if you could make one new law tomorrow, what would it be? Um, well, I'd, I'd like to make a new law that I can have a new law every week, but if I couldn't have that... Uh, I'd like to make a law where list MPs get half the salary of electorate MPs. All right. Wow. Okay. Very good. Why? Because I think that electorate MPs deserve twice the salary. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> guess, guess, guess which one. Listen to the audience. They're, they're outraged, Matt. Yeah. They're outraged. Yeah. <laughs> The funny thing is, Tracy Martin said to me she was coming to watch me, but now I don't think she is. All right, OK. <laughs> Number two. Who's your biggest inspiration? Oh, I think my father. Tom's tracking about mid-70s now. He's a good old man. We went up to the rugby on the weekend to watch the All Blacks beat Wales and had nice. a great time. Right. So, and, and finally, yeah. finally, man, is $2.5 million compensation for Tana Porter enough? Oh, I think it's up for the people to decide that, to make what do that you decision. Think? The cabinet's decided. I don't think any money is going to be enough for that situation. All right. Matt Ducey, thanks for joining us. And for the first time on the show, for the first ever time in the nine years of Backbenchers, Labour MP for Monaco East, Ginny Salisa. <laughs> hey. Malo Alele, good to have you on. Malo Alele. Thank you for having me. How are you? Very good, thank oh, you. Oh, very good. All right. Uh, question one. Um, actually, this is something interesting about you, just uh, getting get to know you a bit. Is it right that you didn't allow your children any soft drink or fizzy uh, at all when they were little? That's right, because both of them were born in the United States. We lived 10 years in the United States, and one thing I did not want to do was to bring back uh, little girls that were overweight. So oh, right. I, I ensured that they were not allowed uh, sugary drinks until they were four. All oh, right, very, very interesting. Okay, right. If you could make one new law tomorrow, what would it be? I would actually repeal the law that this current government passed to sell state houses. One of the things that we are currently in sh uh, experiencing right now is a shortage of state houses as well as a shortage of affordable houses overall. Um, I see this every day in my office oh, right. in Otara. Okay, and who's your biggest inspiration? My father, Samuel Latu, he is 85 years old, a pharmacist, and he moved our whole family over to Aotearoa, New Zealand, for educational purposes. And finally, is $2.5 million compensation for Tana Porter enough? Absolutely not. It is not adequate to compensate for over 21 years of being incarcerated in prison incorrectly. Right, fantastic, fantastic stuff. Uh, and look, a big round of applause for what Matt Ducey told me uh, was New Zealand's new leader of New Zealand First next year, Fletcher Tapiato. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. amazing, amazing. Although I think Ron, Ron, I think Ron, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ron Marks in the audience there, so I'm not quite sure Ron's what. Uh, Ron's just run out. Ron's just run out there. Um, Matt, where did you get that information from? Oh, it's all around Parliament. I was giving you a scoop, Wallace. So when Winston retires next year, apparently Shane Jones isn't coming back. Fletcher Tapiro. Is he right? Not at all. He, Matt's never right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh, uh, and, there's David Seymour sort of cracking, cracking funnies in the, at the bar as well. There's Ron Mark there. Hey, Ron, how are you, mate? You all right? 
Yeah, there, there he is. Okay, Fletcher, Fletcher, if you could make one new law tomorrow, what would it be? Actually, Wallace, I wrote a law not so long ago, and it only uh, missed out in the House by one vote. We could blame Seymour for that. We want true, <laughs> true trade, and we wanted to get rid of ISDS out of our trade agreements so that big corporates couldn't sue countries and okay. reap the tax base. All righty. All right. Fletcher Tabito, who's your biggest inspiration? Well, we had this conversation earlier, we'll and shorter, I so cannot go past so. my father now, Wallace. <laughs> I, just, I just have to join the uh, general consensus. Dad, dad, dad. <laughs> dad. It's yeah. not what you said in an article two years ago. You no. said the right honourable Winston Peters. That's, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> So Winston's out. So you are the new leader. Oh, boy. All right. Okay. Uh, and finally, is $2.5 million compensation for Tana Porter enough? I don't know, but my instinct from looking at what this guy's gone through is it's probably not even a good start, is right. what I'm going to okay. say. Hey, look, huge topic tonight, but uh, Hayley Holt is away on a, a break for four weeks, going to a wedding and a bit of a, a pre-planned break. But, 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 we have uh, Mr. Miami Vice tonight, Ali Akram himself. Round of applause for Ali Akram. Thank you very much for having me, Wallace. You like? Talk, I, I like. Talk about being upstage. Who are you channeling here? I'm channeling Winston Peters, channeling Donald Duck. Uh, okay, all right. The double-breasted is coming back, isn't it? It is, yeah. it is. Just yeah. entirely on my body. Hey, welcome else. welcome to the show. Welcome to this iconic pub. You've been here before? I have been here before. I spent one of the most exciting nights of my life here. Um, 2002 election. Seven civilians walked off the streets. Only hours later, they were new United Future MPs. So, mm. politics. A few hours is a long time in politics. So is a week. Let's take a look at the top five. This week, Max Key enraged anti-smoking advocates who objected to the first son holding an unlit cigarette in a photo spread for Remix magazine. Though Max rightly pointed out that just because you're holding something in a photo shoot doesn't mean that you either like it or enjoy it. And a brief flick through the family photo album reveals just that, that just because you're holding something in a photo doesn't mean you're into it or truly endorse it. Our flyboys were getting excited over talk that $20 billion was about to be spent on defence, meaning flash new planes like this one would be bought so that they could observe boats fishing illegally in our waters. Look at that beauty. If someone saw you fishing from that plane, you would really know that you were being observed. New Zealand First Politics isn't so much a set of policies, it's more a song that was a hit in the 1970s and gets popular around about this time every three years. If you listen hard enough, you might be able to hear it. New Zealand First are opposed to Migrants, let me tell you about those migrants. Atrocity resulted from... They put up signs you cannot read for things you just don't need. In the United States. Migrants. And if the government was trying to show their empathetic side on housing affordability, or trying to reach out to people living in cars, they were doing a bloody good job of hiding it. Does this government have a policy for people who appear homeless but are actually just renovating? <laughs> <laughs> Second, no, but maybe we should get one. And the internet went wild for Her Majesty's green screen coat and hat combo, leading all her loyal subjects to sing God Save Our Gracious Mean. Fantastic, Ali Rukab. That's true, though, isn't it? I mean, maybe you might want to go to David Seymour on this one. Just because you're holding something doesn't mean you're endorsing it. That's true, because he was over by the cannabis people last week, I think it was. He's holding me at the moment, um, which oh. is a... Which is... I actually would endorse you, Ali. You would? You Absolutely. would? Absolutely. You're a top man. Right, OK, good. Um, I look forward to being endorsed. Yeah, well, I just... Tonight. Did. Right, OK, done. <laughs>